We've observed coordinate planes and the points that are plotted on them. We've connected those dots to create slopes. Now we need to find a way to represent a line as a whole. Slope intercept form fits that. Slope intercept form is the equation of a straight line in the form y equals mx plus b. Slope intercept form is the most straightforward named concept in all of math. It's called sloped intercept form because the terms within the equation represent the slope and y intercept. Slope intercept form, or y equals mx plus b, has four separate variables. The y represents the dependent variable. In a math class, the y will just remain a variable y. m represents the slope. This will be an actual value in fraction form. x is the independent variable. Since this is still a variable, we'll leave it as a variable, x. b is the y-intercept. This value is the y-coordinate of the ordered pair at the intercept, or where this particular line crosses the y-axis. y and x remain y and x. They could also be used later to substitute in x and y coordinates from an ordered pair. If you substitute in an x and y ordered pair and you get a true statement, that means that that point is located somewhere on that line. This is one of the many reasons we leave y and x as variables so that we can substitute in to check solutions. Graphing a line using slope-intercept form is a lot like following directions from one house to another. The y-intercept acts as your starting point. This is your house. This is wherever you're leaving from. The slope will act as the directions that a friend or a GPS may be giving you. So we need to analyze this equation in order to find these two very important pieces. Notice that this equation is already in slope-intercept form. y equals 2 thirds x minus 2. That's in y equals mx plus b. Our y-intercept is always at the end by itself. It's a constant. Our slope is always connected to that x. It's the coefficient on the x. My y-intercept, or my b, is negative 2. So that means my y-intercept as an ordered pair is 0, comma, negative 2. Since we observed that y-intercepts always have a 0 for their x value and a y-coordinate, or value, for their y-value. This is where I'm starting to plot my line. My slope is 2 over 3, or 2 thirds. I know that because it's connected to my x. It's the coefficient on my x variable. This tells me my directions to the next point in my line. I need at least two points to define a line. I have a fraction, so I can break it down into rise over run or the change in y over change in x. Two is my rise. This is how far I'm going to go up or down. We talked about how direction is very important on our coordinate plane. Up and right are positive directions. Down and left are negative directions. Positive 2 would be up. So starting at this point, I'm going to go up two places. I'm going to rise 2. 1, 2. My run is 3, or more specifically, positive 3. Right is a positive direction. So I start by rising up, down. Then I run, left or right. I'm going to go 3 to the right. This is where I plot my second point. Once I've made my two points, all I need to do is connect the dots. A line is defined by two points. Let's break this down into more specific steps. Step 1, identify the slope and y-intercept. Step one is one of those organizational steps. It isn't necessarily part of our calculation or plotting, but it helps us identify that given information so that we can take all the proper steps. 
my slope in y equals negative 1 half x plus 4 is negative 1 half. I know this because y equals mx put plus b puts the m right next to the x. It's the coefficient on our x variable. Either take the time to circle it or write it out. You will be asked to identify it. My b at the very end of my equation is my y-intercept. That's 4. When I represent my y-intercept, I can't just write 4. I have to identify the ordered pair. All y-intercepts have an x-coordinate of 0. So it's 0, 4. A lot of students skip these two important pieces of information. This step of finding your slope and your y-intercept is probably the most challenging and most important step in the entire process of graphing. Beyond this, all you have is counting and plotting an ordered pair, two skills that we've already covered and then some. So after I have my slope and my y-intercept, I need to plot the y-intercept. The y-intercept is at 0, 4. So I can think of it two ways. I can start at the origin, go 0, right or left, go 4 up, or I know that I'm crossing the y-axis at 4. So I just need to find positive 4 on the y-axis and plot a point. Next, I'm going to use the slope to rise and run to the next point. My slope is negative 1 over 2. My rise is negative 1. So rise is up or down. Up is positive, down is negative. So I'm going to go down 1. Take the time to draw in those little arrows. If you need to erase them later, that's fine. Just draw them as little lumps. It helps you keep track of where you are on the coordinate plane. My run is positive 2. Left is negative. Right is positive. So I'm going to run 2 to the right. And then I'm going to plot another point. Once I have my points... Connect the points with a straight line. All you need to truly plot a line or graph a line is two points. However, if you wanted to find a third, all you would do is rise negative one, so go down one, and then two to the right again to find a point. Let's try a couple problems together. Start by finding the slope and y-intercept. Slope is always connected to the x, so my slope is 3. But slope should always be represented as a fraction or ratio. It's not always given that way in the equation. If I had to write 3, a whole number, as a fraction, I would just simply put a 1 underneath. This way I have a rise, I have a run. My y-intercept, my b is negative 2, so that means I have 0, negative 2 as my y-intercept. Y-intercepts always have 0 for their x-coordinate and a value for their y-coordinate. I'm going to start by plotting 0, negative 3 on the coordinate plane. I can either use that or uh, use my skills of plotting a point, or I can simply find negative 2 on my y-axis and plot a point there. I'm going to use my slope as directions. I'm going to rise 3, 3 in the positive direction, so up, 1, 2, 3. Then I'm going to run 1. 1 is also positive. Right is positive, left is negative when I'm talking about horizontal. So I'm going to go 1 to the right. I'm done. I rose 3 upward. I ran 1 to the right. I'm going to plot my second ordered pair. And then I could, if I wanted to, connect the dots. If you're ever unsure about the second point you plotted, you can plot more. Although you only need two points to define a line, three, four, five points just proves that you're correct. I'm going to find a point in the opposite direction. This is a great trick if you're given a graph like the ones here, or a coordinate plane like the ones here, and the point that you would be drawing is too far off the graph in one direction. Instead of going off the graph, simply reverse or find the opposite of your rise and the opposite of your run and find a point in the opposite direction. So instead of going up three, I'm going to go down three instead. One, two, three. Instead of going right one, I'm going to go left one. 
I'm going to plot another point there and connect the dots. They're all on the same line. As long as you properly use the same slope, you'll find infinite points on that line, since it goes in both directions infinitely. Let's try this next one. Find your slope, find your y-intercept. My slope is negative 7 over 3. Again, notice that we did not turn that into a mixed number. Leave it as an improper fraction. In this case, the equation was given to us with the negative out front. It was negative 7 thirds. I tend to put the negative in the numerator. Since the negative and positive rise or run tells us whether we're going up, down, left, or right, make one of them negative, not the whole slope. y equals mx plus b. b is my y-intercept, so it's 4. 0, 4 is my y-intercept. I can either plot 0, 4 on my coordinate plane or find where 4 is on the y-axis. I'm going to use my slope of negative 7 over 3 to find my next point. Negative 7 over 3, so I'm going to rise negative 7. That means I'm going down 7 places. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. My run is 3, positive 3. So I'm going horizontally for my run. Left is negative, right is positive. So I'm going to go 3 in the positive direction. Since this positive and negative is so important, that's why I applied that negative just to my rise. I wasn't running in a negative direction, just rising in a negative direction. Once I have my two points, I connect the dots. On your own, try these two graphs. Identify your slope, your y-intercept, plot your y-intercept, and then use your slope to find the next point. If you find that it forces you to plot the second point off the graph, or if you want to find extra points in the opposite direction, take the opposite of your rise and your run. So if it's positive, make it negative. If it's negative, make it positive. We can also graph using tables. This is where leaving the y and the x as variables can become very useful. In this case, we can pick three x values and list them in a table. So I'm going to use 0, 1, and 2. These are the x values we're going to substitute in. So we substitute these values into the equation. I'm going to rewrite each equation with x replaced. So x is 0, x is 1, and x is 2. Now I'm going to evaluate for y and list my answers in the table. When x is 0, y equals 4. 0 times negative 1 half is 0, plus 4 is 4. When x is 1, y equals 3.5. 1 times negative 1 half is negative 1 half, plus 4 gives me negative, or positive 3.5, or 3.5. When x equals 2, y equals 3. Negative 1 half times 2 is negative 1. Negative 1 plus 4 is positive 3. I'm going to then plot or place all of those values into my y column. What I've created is three separate ordered pairs, each with an x coordinate and a y coordinate. 0, 4, 1, 3.5, 2, 3. Like I said before, when you have an x and y ordered pair that makes a true statement, you know that that solution or that ordered pair is on the line that you're representing. Now that I have my three ordered pairs, I'm going to plot the ordered pairs. I chose three points in this case because it's a lot easier to make a mistake when you're doing problems this way. Using tables requires a lot of different operations. The more operations, the higher probability that you may make a mistake. So try three points. If they don't create a straight line, that means you need to double check your work. If you just have two, you'll assume whatever you have is correct. So I'm going to plot my three ordered pairs, 0, 4, 1, 3, and a half. So I went from my origin, 1 right. I went up 3, and then I went halfway to the next 
and then I'm going to plot 2, comma 3. From my origin, I went 2 to the right, and then I went up 3. Last logical step, connect the dots, assuming they're all in the correct order, the current in a straight line. Let's try a couple of these together. I'm going to pick 3x values, 1, 2, and 3. I'm going to then substitute them in for x in order to solve for y. y equals 3 times 1 minus 2. y equals 3 times 2 minus 2. y equals 3 times 3 minus 2. Now I'm set up to, to evaluate to find what y equals. 3 times 1 is 3 minus 2 equals 1. 3 times 2 is 6, minus 2 equals 4. 3 times 3 is 9, minus 2 equals 7. y equals 1, 4, 7. Those are my three ordered pairs. 1, 1, 2, 4, 3, 7. Now I can just use my uh, skills for plotting ordered pairs to find 1, 1, 2, 4, and then 3, 7 would be off my coordinate plane. This is the challenge with using pre-made coordinate planes. You will see this happen. You can draw the coordinate plane or extend the lines up or estimate as best you can. If this happens when you're using your slope, simply find the opposite of your rise, the opposite of your run, and find a point that's in the other direction. So it looks like we have a slope here of 3 over 1. So instead of going up 3 and then over 1, which gets us off the coordinate plane, we could go down 3 and back 1. Regardless, we get a straight line. On your own, try the last problem. Pick three smaller x values, substitute them in, evaluate for y, plot your new ordered pairs, and connect the dots.